Hello everyone, this video is on the refraction and total internal reflection of light. By way of review, refraction is a basic behaviour of waves that involves the bending of waves as they travel through from one medium to another. The bending of waves refers to the changes that occur to a wave's velocity, and velocity refers to its speed as well as the direction of propagation of the actual wave. So using the ray model of light, when we have a wave that travels from medium 1 to medium 2, this is referred to as the incident wave or the incident ray. The angle that the incident ray makes with the normal drawn from the interface from the two media is known as the angle of incidence or the incident angle. When the light ray begins to travel in the second medium, its direction of propagation, that is its velocity, changes. And as a result, the angle that the light ray makes with the normal is now different to the angle of incidence. This angle is referred to as the angle of refraction. Since the velocity or speed of the wave is equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength, as refraction changes the speed of the wave, its wavelength also changes. We'll discuss this in more detail in a moment. The behavior of refraction is described quantitatively by Snell's law. Snell's law states that the ratio of the sine function of the angle of incidence to the sine function of the angle of refraction should be equal to the refractive index of the second medium divided by the refractive index of the first medium. The refractive index of the medium is the number that describes to what extent does the medium cause the light wave to refract. Greater the index, that means the higher the number, greater the degree of refraction. So the wave itself will be bent more via refraction. Snell's law also states that this ratio between the angles as well as the refractive indices is also equal to the velocity of the wave in the first medium to the second medium, as well as the wavelength of the wave in the first medium divided by the second medium. If we focus on the first part of Snell's law, we can rearrange this equation to give us n1 times by sine theta i, which is the incident angle, equal to n2 times by sine theta r, which is the refractive angle. This is the equation provided by Nessa in the data sheet. Air is a very common medium light propagates in. The refractive index of air is very close to the value of 1. So in any circumstances when light travels into a new medium from air, the value of n1, which is the refractive index of the first medium that the wave travels from, can be always substituted as 1. This simplifies the equation of Snell's law to give us an expression for the refractive index of the second medium, n2, and that is equal to the speed of light in air divided by the velocity of light in the second medium, v2. As we discussed before, the value of the refractive index determines the extent to which the light wave refracts. There are two possible scenarios. The first scenario is where the refractive index of the new medium is greater than the refractive index of the initial medium, n1. Vice versa, we can also have a scenario where the refractive index of the new medium is less than the value of the initial refractive index. What's useful to remember is when the refractive index of the new medium is larger than the refractive index of the initial medium, the angle of refraction is always less than the angle of incidence. This means that the new light ray, as it passes through the new medium, will be bent towards the normal. Conversely, when the refractive index of the new medium is less than the index of the original medium, the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. This means the refracted light ray will be bent and travel away from the normal compared to the incident ray. Since the value of the refractive index determines the angle of refraction, when light travels into glass versus water, the angle of refraction will be slightly different. In glass, the angle of refraction is slightly smaller than the angle of refraction in water. This implies that the refractive index in glass is higher than the refractive index in water. Refraction not only changes the velocity or the direction of the light ray, it also changes the light speed. When light travels from air or vacuum into a new medium, 
the velocity in a new medium is given by the speed of light in air slash vacuum divided by the refractive index of the new medium. Therefore, this equation tells us that the new velocity is inversely proportional to the refractive index. So, the higher the refractive index, the slower the light speed will be. Record that for any wave, the velocity of the wave is given by the product of the frequency and its wavelength. Since the velocity changes, the wavelength of the wave also changes. So, if the velocity decreases, the wavelength of the light in the new medium will also be shorter. It is important to keep in mind though, the frequency in refraction always remains constant. Only the wavelength changes with the velocity. Let's go through a calculation example using Snell's law. Light travels from air with a refractive index of 1 into an optic fiber which has an index of refraction of 1.44. If the angle of incidence at the end of the fiber is 22 degrees, so this is your theta i, what is the angle of refraction inside the fiber? We can use Snell's law, which would be n, n1 times by sine theta i equals to n2 times by sine theta r. ni is 1.00 and the angle of incidence is 22 degrees. This is equal to n2, which is 1.44 and this is multiplied by sine theta r. So sine theta r equals to sine 22 degrees divided by 1.44. And we take the sine inverse to find the angle of refraction, which gives us a value of 15 degrees. The angle of refraction being smaller than the angle of incidence is expected because the, the refractive index of the optic fiber is higher than the refractive index of air. Now let's go through part B. What is the speed of light in the optic fiber? Remember that the velocity of the light wave in the new medium, let's call that V2, is equal to the speed of light in air, which is the first medium, divided by the refractive index of the new medium. So this is equal to 3 times by 10 to the power of 8, which is the speed of light in the original medium, divided by the refractive index of 1.44. And this gives a value of 2.083, times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. And again, the velocity here being slower than the original medium is also expected due to the optic fiber having a higher refractive index than that of air. Total internal reflection is a behavior of waves when it undergoes complete reflection when it reaches the boundary or interface between two media. In total internal reflection, no refraction, that is, no bending of light, occurs. All of the instant light wave that reaches the medium will be reflected off the boundary. None of the light ray will travel through into the second medium to undergo refraction. In order for total internal reflection to occur, there are two main conditions. First, the light must travel into the new medium that has a lower refractive index than the initial medium, that is, the value of n2 must be less than the value of n1. This is very important. The second condition is that the angle of incidence, which is this angle here, that the incident light ray makes with the normal, must be greater than a critical angle. We'll go through what this is in a very short moment. The critical angle is the angle that the angle of incidence must exceed for the light ray to undergo total internal reflection. So in this diagram, if the angle of incidence is smaller than the critical angle, then the light ray will pass through the boundary between the two media into medium 2 and therefore undergo refraction. When the angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle, then something interesting happens. Neither reflection nor refraction occur. The resultant light ray will travel parallel to the boundary between the two media. For total internal reflection to occur, the angle of incidence must actually be greater or exceeding the critical angle. When this occurs, no refraction happens and the light ray will be simply reflected off the boundary between the two media. So the important question arises, how do we calculate this critical angle in order to determine whether the incident light ray will undergo reflection or refraction? Remember that in our diagram, when the angle of incidence equals to the critical angle, 
the light ray neither undergoes reflection or refraction, and it will become perpendicular to the normal between the two surfaces. We can call this angle theta r, which is equal to 90 degrees. So the value of theta r in Snell's law equals to 90 degrees when the angle of incidence equals exactly to the critical angle. So in Snell's law, we can substitute theta r as 90 degrees. And the value of sine 90 is simply 1, and that gives us an expression for the sine of the critical angle. Therefore, the value of the critical angle is simply sine inverse of the ratio between the new refractive index to the initial refractive index. This expression also explains why total internal reflection can only occur if the value of n2 is less than the value of n1. If the value of n2 is greater than the value of n1, then sine inverse of a number that's greater than 1 is undefined because it is not possible. The value of n2 divided by n1 must be less than 1 in order to produce a result for the critical angle. A ray of light makes a transition from a sample of benzene, which has a refractive index of 1.50, into water with a refractive index of 1.33. So in part A, sine theta of the critical angle is equal to n2 divided by n1. So the value of critical angle is equal to sine inverse of 1.33 divided by 1.50. This gives a value of 62.5 degrees. This number implies that if the angle of incidence is greater than 62.5 degrees, the light ray will undergo total internal reflection instead of refraction. Now, part B. Explain why total internal reflection cannot occur when light travels from water into benzene, so the other way around. If this occurs, benzene, which is a new medium, will have a higher refractive index than that of water. Remember that the second condition for total internal reflection to occur is that the value of the refractive index of the new medium, that is N2, must be less than the value of N1. Since benzene's index is higher than that of water, total internal reflection cannot occur. To conclude the video, I'll quickly talk about some of the applications of total internal reflection and why it is important for students to learn about it. Total internal reflection is the underlying physics principle of fiber optics. Fiber optics involves the transmission of light wave through a tube. The tube is constructed so that the inside of the tube has a, has a larger refractive index than the outer layer of the tube. So the value of N2, which is the outside, is lower than the value of N1. This means when the light ray travels from the inside of the optic fiber to the outside, if the critical angle is exceeded, it will undergo total internal reflection. And the optic fiber is designed such that the light ray will always be reflected as it travels through the optic fiber. This technology is used nowadays in most forms of communication, such as fiber optic internet and telecommunication. The transmission of light through such an optic fiber is also used in medical endoscopes to visualize the inside of human bodies without having to employ invasive surgery. Total internal reflection is also used and important to understand in gemology. For example, a particular gem, such as diamond, must be cut in such a way that when the light ray enters the inside of the diamond, it will exceed the critical angle and undergo total internal reflection. This will cause the light ray to be trapped inside the gem or the diamond, allowing it to appear more shiny and more appealing to buyers. This concludes the video on refraction of light and total internal reflection. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.